All right, let's look at two more algebraic equations. Here we have one that looks like a classic quadratic, 18x squared minus 27x plus 4 equals 0. So let's go through our progression to see what's going to be the best method to use. Let's see, can I use the square root property? I've got x squared and x, so this is not the best thing for us. What about the zero factor theorem? Can we factor this? Well, if we do the zero factor theorem, you might want to do the AC method. So the AC method would say, do 18 times 4. So let's see. A times C means 18 times 4. That equals 72. And you want to see, can you find factors of 72? Can you find a way for this to break down so that those factors will add to 27? Let's see, we have 1 and 72. That doesn't work. That adds to 73. 2 goes into 72 36 times, but those numbers add to 38. We're getting closer. 3. 3 goes into 72 24 times, and you'll see that 3 and 24 are those numbers that add to 27. So that's what I want to use. Well, how do we now use these? There are a couple ways of doing this. Uh, the most common way is to take that minus 27x and rewrite it using the 3 and the 24. Now, the order doesn't really matter. So if you want to say 3 and 24 or 24 and 3, it's all going to work out the same. But pay attention to your signs. To get a negative 27x, you need to use negative 3x and negative 24x. They both have to be negative. And now that we have four terms, we're going to use factoring by grouping to finish this. So in the first group, the common factor here is 3x. So I'm going to factor that out. That gives me 6x from the 18x squared. I had 3x. I took out 3x. So I divided that out. So I have a 1. In this next group right here, I start off with a negative, and the common factor for 24 and 4 is 4. So I'm going to factor out the 4. And again, I'm left with 6x minus 1. That's the way factoring by, by grouping is supposed to work. All right, so 6x minus 1 is my greatest common factor. So I factor that out. I'm left with 3x minus 4. So I got my factorization and it equals 0, so I should be good to go from here. So using that 0 factor theorem, 6x minus 1 is equal to 0, or 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now we've seen these guys over and over and over again. It shouldn't be too much of a challenge to get x by itself. 6x equals 1, so x is equal to 1 over 6 over here. We move the 4 to the other side, and we divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to 1 over 6, or x is equal to 4 over 3. Yep. So let's do one more. One with fractions, because we know everybody loves fractions. All right, so let's do one more, this time with fractions. So the key thing here is that you want to get rid of the fractions. And the way that we do that is by clearing away the fractions and making sure that everybody has the same denominator, which means we have to first factor everything. So this first fraction factors as x minus 6 times x plus 2. The next one factors as x minus 6 times x plus 3. And the last denominator will factor as x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now our job is to put in the missing factors so that everybody has the exact same set of factors. So if you look at this first denominator, there is a factor that the other guys have that he doesn't have, and that's the x plus 3. 
So you put that missing factor in the denominator and the numerator. For the fraction in the middle, he is missing the factor x plus 2. So we put that missing factor in the denominator and numerator. And the last one is missing the factor x minus 6. So now since everybody has the exact same set of factors for the denominator, we can now ignore those guys. Since everybody has the same denominator, we can just write our equation from the numerators. So this is x times x plus 3 minus 6 times x plus 2 is equal to 4 times x minus 6. So I keep the colors and everything the same. I don't do any multiplication until the next step. So now we can multiply, distribute, so we get x squared plus 3x. Distribute the negative 6, watch your signs, that's negative 6x minus 12. And distribute the 4, so that's 4x minus 24. You see that we have something that's quadratic, the x squared, so that means everything should be on the same side. So we are going to move. 4x, subtract 4x on both sides, and we need to add 24 on both sides. So add 24. And let's see what we have. All right, so we have x squared. And we've got 3x minus 6x minus 4x. So 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Negative 3, negative 4 is negative 7x, negative 12, and positive 24 is positive 12. All right, so we have a nice quadratic. This is a nice, really nice one because it factors. Find factors of 12 that add to 7. So we use x minus 3 and x minus 4. Finish solving for this. So you get x is equal to positive 3 or x is equal to positive 4, all right? Now, I would just go ahead and box these answers, but we have to be careful because we're dealing with a fraction. We must always be mindful of our restricted values. That would mean any value of x, any replacement of x, that would cause the denominator to become 0, which means you cannot have positive 6, you can't have negative 2, and you can't have negative 3. So as long as we don't have any of those as our potential solutions, we're going to be okay. Now, this guy looks close, but he's not negative 3. So these are the two answers. And everybody can be happy. There you go.